Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited about the word that we believe will bless you and change how you've been expecting from God. Do you know that time won't even bother someone whose hope and faith is in him? That's right. Listen to today's message. We'll believe it will change your life and inspire you to expect greater. Open your Bibles to Matthew 9, verses 18. They'll have it on the screens if you don't have a Bible with you. But we said something at the beginning of this year, and we said, what? Expect greater. And so we're going to take some time just to build a case for hope. We started last week building a case for hope. Y'all, y'all, y'all think hope is winning right, right now, right? Is hope winning? Yes. Y'all, y'all talk to me. Is hope winning yes. in your life? <laughs> we'll go a little further. But in Matthew 9, verses 18, it says, While he spoke these things to them, Behold, and this is Jesus who was speaking. A ruler came and worshiped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, I'll say 12 years, came from behind and touched the hem of his garment, verse 21, for she said to herself, y'all say this with me, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Y'all say expectation. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that, that hour when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw that the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, make room for the girl is not dead. Because remember, Jesus was on his way somewhere. And the woman with the issue of blood, who say had an issue, had confronted Jesus on his route. So here he is finishing where he was going. And he said to them, make room for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all the land. And what's so awesome about this is, of course, we can see here she had an expectation. And whenever God speaks a word like that, last year he spoke Great, um, he spoke stability was our word. Whenever he gives us a word, he's not only saying that's what's going to happen in this house, but that's the expectation you should have in your house. And so when God said expect greater, he wasn't just talking about expect greater here. He was talking about expect greater where you live. Y'all say in my house, I can expect greater. And then the first thing he kind of told us, he said, but I want you to get a joy out in front of you, y'all say, get a joy. Get a joy. And we read this in Hebrews 12 in the New King James Version. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, y'all say Jesus, Jesus, the author and the finisher of the faith for the joy. And that's why we say we, the first thing we need to do is get a joy out in front of us because it's showing us it was the joy set before him that he endured the cross. Jesus had a joy out in front of him that gave him the endurance to go through what life had tossed at him. And so that's what we say. The first thing we're going to do to expect greater is we're going to get a joy out in front of us. And we talked about last week, we're not talking about that joy that you can do. We're talking about that joy only he can do. We're talking about getting an expectation, a hope out in front of you that only God can produce this in my life. And we're going to go a little deep today because we're going to talk about resurrecting that hope that the last time you tried to hope for it, the last time you tried to believe for it, it hurt you because it didn't come to pass. Sometimes we don't we lower our expectations and we talked about this last week because disappointment can hurt. But we won't allow disappointment the opportunity to guide our lives. 
What are you saying, Pastor Brian? Disappointment is trying to paralyze you where you are. It is trying to paralyze you and say, don't you hope? Hoping is bad. Dreaming is bad. Don't you expect? Expecting hurts. Just let life give you what life wants to give you. Let me tell you something. Do not let life just give you what life wants to give you. Life will teach you to expect disappointment. I, don't, I ain't going to let life can teach me a lot of things, but it's not going to teach me how to become comfortable with disappointment. It ain't going to teach me that. And we talked about that last week. Life can teach me a lot of things, but it will not teach me how to live comfortable with disappointment. When the word of God is teaching me and raising me every day to expect greater despite what I see. And that's what I love about it. The joy was out in front because he was going to see some things. But even though he saw some things, he had a firm-rooted joy that he wasn't letting go of. And we ain't talking about no average person. We talking about Jesus. Our Lord and Savior said, I need a joy. And if he needs some joy, I believe we need some joy. If he had a joy out in front of him, so I said, I need everybody to take a moment and think about that thing that you don't even want to talk about because the last time you talked about it, somebody talked about how bad you look because it didn't happen. Bring that back. Just bring it back. <laughs> and expect greater. Expect greater. And Pastor Deborah, if y'all didn't hear Wednesday night's message, Pastor Deborah just, my Jesus. You know, I was listening to her message again. I was thinking about just playing that. We just going to play that. But I know since some of y'all ain't here, I'm going to replay it right now in front of you real quick. But she took us to Zechariah 9 and 12 in the New Living Translation. And it reads to us, come back to the place of safety. All you prisoners who still have hope. It says some of y'all still got hope. Some of y'all ain't giving up on the fact that God is a promise keeper. And he's saying, come back. Come back. Don't you run out there with the rest of these folks that have lost their trust in Jesus. Come on back. You know a piece of you still believes it's going to happen. Just grab that little piece. We talking, we last, oh, Lord, stay on script. <laughs> I'm just so excited about the fact that God said, Brian, it's okay to expect something from me that only I can do. Oh, life has tried to teach me all types of stuff from the stuff I saw. And he said, you know what, Brian? Not in 2020. Just go ahead and just push it back. Just push it back. Get you some hope. It don't matter if your hope makes sense. Your hope ain't supposed to make sense. The only way your hope is supposed to be possible is because he's faithful. You need something in your life that only God's faithfulness to what he said can make it happen. Oh, Lord, I got to finish what Pastor Deborah said. Then she took us to Psalms. Oh, wait, I didn't even finish that. He said, because I promised this very day that I will repay you two, repay you two blessings for each of your troubles. And I already know life will try to throw things at you. And life has thrown a lot of things at a lot of people this far. But guess what? We did something that was so important. Before life had a chance to take our hope, we planted our hope in Jesus. And we're not taking it. We ain't moving it. We will continue to expect greater. We will continue to expect for what he promised to come to pass. I know I'm in the right church today. Psalms 27 and 13, yet I am confident that I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. Now, that's an expectation because I know God got some good things waiting on me. But however, it's a great expectation. I will see his goodness in the land of of the living. Any folks in here saying today, I'm going to see his goodness in the land of the living. I'm going to see it with these eyes right here. Then she took us to Rome. I'm just reviewing what she said on Wednesday. We ain't even got to today yet. Then she took us to Romans 15. I told y'all it was a good one. We could have just played it took us to Romans 15 and 12 and it says again 
And again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse. And he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I tell people, God is a hope dealer. He's a hope dealer. God just goes around dealing hope. Some of y'all know of a different dealer, and we ain't going to talk about that one today. But today we're going to talk about the hope dealer. We're going to talk about the God that will fill you up with a joy that comes from the Holy Ghost. Y'all say the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and so we started building a case for hope. We start saying, hold up now. I'm supposed to be dreaming. Hold up now. I'm supposed to be expecting. Hold up now. I'm supposed to be hoping for greater. Now, I understand that certain things y'all like to see tactically, but my hope ain't supposed to be tactical. It's supposed to be radical. My hope is supposed to say there is something out there that God still has me here for, and I will see it in the land of the living. And we said, why is that important? Because as we started to look at faith, because you got to appropriate faith to understand what hope is doing, we realized something about our faith, and we'll keep building on it. Faith is actually telling me to hope for something. Faith is giving me evidence that there is something I should be hoped for. Y'all say, well, my, faith my faith needs an assignment. Like, you can just keep building up on the word, building up on the word, building up on the word, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But if you start listening and receiving what the word of God is saying, it'll start telling you to change your expectation. But that's the part where we start to get a little weary. But as we keep reading, we realize we keep hoping. Some people even stop reading because they don't like the fact it makes them hope. We ain't here for that this week, neither. But the word of God, when you read the word of God, it will cause you to start thinking differently about life. And I just tell people, do not think that that's strange. That's what it's designed to do. Some of y'all sitting there right now thinking, I came in here and now I'm thinking about stuff I ain't thought about in 20 years. That's what the word of God is designed to do. It's designed to let you know that with through God, all things are possible. Now, some people don't like that because it sounds like a blank check. Paul's right there again. Some people don't like that because that hasn't been their experience. Some people don't like that because that hasn't been what they've saw. But just because that's their experience, just because that's what they saw, that doesn't mean it has the ability to now set your expectation. And we'll read it. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are invisible. And just cold cracker, I'm just going to give y'all a look. God told me this year, we're going to give everybody a reason to read their Bible. Like, you're going to have a real reason to open up that book this year. Because you're going to realize this book is actually giving me the confidence that there's evidence for what I'm hoping for. I need to know what this thing is saying. Y'all say, hope is the fruit of my faith. As my faith gets revealed to me, hope starts to rise within me. It's natural. It's natural. It's natural. Why do you keep saying that, Pastor Brian? Because some people, the moment they have a thought beyond their ability, they try to capture it and say it's not possible. 
But as you received who you are in Christ, let me tell you something. More thoughts about what he can do through you, regardless of you, will start popping up. And you don't need to think it's strange that he's speaking things within you that your background can't back up. That's normal activity for the Holy Spirit is to speak things to you. Your background can't back up, but his can. He said, but you got to know me. Because as believers, we know we walk by faith and not by sight. Because truth is, faith may not produce sight to see, but it gives foundations to walk on and a hope to believe. We said, it's not that we're walking blindly. We're walking in the confidence that what he said is true. And that's what gives me a firm assurance that I can hope now. Because your faith is evidence. And I know some of y'all have been in the court before. And so you'll understand this example. (laughs) But they accuse you of something. But until they can present evidence, they can't convict you of anything. They can say, we believe you did it, but until they can present enough satisfactory evidence that convicts you of what they are trying to say you did, it's a non-case. Matter of fact, they can't even take you to court until they have evidence produced. And many people have been trying to take their hope to trial without evidence. But you need faith to convict or prove what you're hoping for. And that's why it's so important. So important. I told y'all, we're going to give y'all a reason to read your Bible this year. It's so important. Why you had to laugh? (laughs) It's so important that we understand what is promised to us. So that when we say he's a promise keeper, there's, we actually know what we're proving. Because truth is, hope is birthed from the thoughts you process when examining evidence. Hope is birthed from the thoughts you process when you examine the evidence. You look into the evidence, and based on what you see, you believe you have hope to convict something. You look into what has been promised to you, and based on what has been promised to you, you then start believing from that point that you can have what you're hoping for. Look at your neighbor and say, what evidence are you processing to support your expectation? Because right there, right there is where Satan has been able to come in and take our hope. Because he realized something. We were willing to speak of a hope, but we weren't willing to really know that hope. And so when things happened, we retracted our hope because it wasn't convicted yet. Mm. When situation and circumstances started taking place, we retracted our hope because we didn't convict it and prove that it was true before we even started to try. Some of y'all like, Pastor, just get back to expect greater. I feel like I'm learning something right now, and it's, it's messing with my head. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. Life will progressively teach you 
how to expect less and less and less and less until you don't expect nothing at all. It just will wear you, wear you, wear you, wear you, wear you down. But God's like, when we build this hope right, and they try to take your hope, the problem is, before you spoke, you already convicted it, you already proved it, and examined the evidence, and knew it was true. So it didn't matter what the opposing side was trying to present because the evidence that I'm using is fact, not fiction. And when I look at, I heard your brother. <laughs> And when I look at this woman with an issue of blood, it's amazing to me because the facts didn't mess with her expectation. The facts of the situation did not change her hope. The, 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 the facts did not change her expectation. Y'all want to hear some of these facts? Fact is, she had this issue for 12 years. That's enough time to say, I might have to live with this. I ain't gonna ask nobody to raise their hand, but some of us have had a 12-year issue that is still going on. And God sent me here to tell you that the fact may be you've been fighting for a long time, but that shouldn't change your expectation. She had been Dealing with this for 12 years. And I don't know how long you've been dealing with, with what you've been dealing with. But we about to use facts to convict and prove the fact that you can still retain hope for what he promised. Now I want to know another fact. The doctors couldn't fix it. The doctors wasn't educated enough to fix her issue. Trained professionals had reviewed her, and it ain't possible. And some of y'all, there's some trained professionals that have told you that what you hoping for, it ain't possible. Y'all want to hear another fact? She has spent all her money. She couldn't even buy it. But even though, and some of y'all have spent a lot of money going flat, bro, trying to buy you some juice. We ain't come here for a day, but I can tell y'all want to talk about it. <laughs> she was a castaway. Not permitted to even be in the presence of people. These are the facts. The fact was Jesus wasn't even allowed by law to even touch. These are the facts of the case. The facts were she should not even have an expectation or a hope 
for anything to take place. You done spent your money. It has been 12 years. You done seen all the doctors. The rules are you can't even go see Jesus. Matter of fact, you're just supposed to stay locked up with this sickness with the rest of these sick folks. But truth is, we have to stop expecting based on the labels society has given us. She was carrying more labels. I was thinking of a fashion store. (laughs) But she was carrying more labels that said that she should not expect than many of us have ever experienced. But Galatians 2 and 20 tells us that we have a new label. It says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And since I have this new label, I now can expect and have a hope that's different than what the facts of society have presented. Because these facts are true. The evidence have proven that they can't, but they couldn't prove that he still could. The evidence had proven that she couldn't buy it, but it did not prove that she couldn't have it. The evidence had proven that time couldn't fix it, not that it couldn't be fixed. And truth is, you won't start expecting less until you start thinking that you are less. It's amazing how our expectation match how worthy or how worthless or how, how, I'm trying to think of that word, how valuable. We are. How you value yourself will often set the level from which you're willing to expect and accept. See, she had did something that many of us need to do today is understand that society cannot set my value. And I expect according to the value I believe I have. And I believe she just said to herself, I'm worth it. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm worth it. it. She's like, I'm worth it. I might not be worth it to them. And they proven that. They locked me up, told me not to come out. But just because I'm not worth it to them doesn't mean I'm not worth it to him. And I want to say this. Because we may have to expect from people based on the level that we deserve but we never have to expect from God based on the level we deserve. People will tell you 
only expect what you deserve. And that's okay. Because people will normally only treat you based upon how valuable they think you are. But simply because I have to deal with you based on the level of what I deserve doesn't mean I have to deal with him based on the level I deserve. And it's time we start making a distinction between the difference. I may expect from you based on what I have deserved, but I never expect from him based on what I deserve. And she was caught in the middle of a situation. Because yes, they had told her, what you deserve is isolation. But she said, I got a hope. I got a hope. I have a hope in somebody that does not deal with me based on the way that I may have deserved to have been treated. And the problem isn't that I should expect less. The simple fix to this situation is I shouldn't expect you to be the one who does what God promises. But my expectations don't change. I'll take them off of you, but they should have never even been on you. I leave it up to you. You'll take my money, tell me you can't do it, and then lock me up and hope for me to just somehow get fixed. But I've heard of a man named Jesus. And unfortunately, at this point in time, I'm willing to risk some things. Because I have a belief, I have a hope that if I can even just get a touch of the hem of his garment, everything will be well. Spent 12 years. I'm broke. I have no natural answer. But I still have hope. I don't think I said this one, but truth is what you're willing to accept is often a reflection of what you think that you're worth. But this woman had a I'm worth it attitude. We have to have a I'm worth it attitude. Don't just say it, I'm worth it. She expected more because she received that she was worth more. Amen. And Jesus has given us all new value. Regardless of our past, regardless of our failures, regardless of our shortcomings. And he says, take that hope and relabel yourself. And set an expectation that even if it's been 12 years, even if the facts are true, understand that I'm still able to perform. I'm still able to do what I promised. I can do. But can I tell y'all something? 
I truly believe that one of the most powerful parts of her story is that not only did she not change her expectation of what Jesus could do, but then she responded because she expected. Because she expected, she responded by going to see him. And I believe that's the, in one of the most powerful parts of this story, is the fact that she didn't sit still in her expectation. But she allowed her expectation to give her hope that if I can just get to him, it shall be done. And why are you saying this, Pastor Brian? Because one of the worst things that disappointment tries to teach us is that what we do is no longer relevant. <laughs> However, one act of obedience still carries the same power it always had. It doesn't matter what the history has been. It doesn't matter what the track record has been. Restore your hope that still one act of obedience till my father can bring everything he's promised he said he can do. And I know this is a tough spot and I'm not expecting y'all to shout in this moment. Because many of us, we've been at it. We've been at it for some time. Believing for some time. Hearing and doing for some time. I just want to let you know, don't let time lower your expectations of what you can receive from him. It still only takes one act. And I'm saying that because I know many of you have something in your heart that God's pressing in you to do. You're like, I've done it before. I've seen it before. I tried it before. And he just wanted me to tell you to renew your hope. Because when you start expecting different, you start acting different. And I laugh because you could tell if you ever get around some kids when Christmas time is coming. <laughs> By now, everybody's return back to their normal course of behavior. <laughs> but around October and November, there's an expectation of something to arrive. And immediately, people start to change how they do some things because they have an expectation of some things. Amen. And I didn't just come here to tell you today that you should have simply a hope of expecting greater. I came here to let you know that also don't allow what you do to become numb as you're expecting. Still approach everything you got with all that you have. Still approach everything he tells you to do with all that you can give. Still approach every assignment with all that he has empowered you to do. Why you act the way you act? Because my hope is high. My expectation is high. But it's been 12 years. Shouldn't you have changed at least the effort you in? But I'm not changing. 
my approach. I'm not changing my focus. I'm not changing my energy. I'm not changing my drive because my hope is in him. Because truth is, I expect based on the level of his victory, not my history. I've looked at what he's won for me, and I'm convicted of the fact that it's mine. Because he took me in. Not because I earned it, not because I deserved it, but he took me in of a choice of his own. And John 16 and 33 says, I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. In Hebrews 6 and 18. These are, this is one of the most just powerful scriptures that lift my life. And it says, I'm reading New Living Translation. So God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have filled, fleed to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is strong and trustworthy. Anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. I hope you enjoyed the message. Remember to always like and subscribe to our YouTube page so you can stay up to date with every message as they are released. Remember, today is a good day to have a good day. See you soon.